The town of Magalang in the province of Pampanga experienced a string of homicides between the years 1816 and 1826 that took place in various locations. When the Spanish colonial government ruled the Philippines, both Spaniards and natives were horrified and searched for the perpetrator at the time. The crime's nature was comparatively unusual, and there is very little information available about them. However, according to other sources, everything began in 1812 when a young Filipino man who had been turned down for a position of authority that was typically held by the colonizers at the time became their parish priest. His name was Father Juan Severino Mollery. Born in Macabebe, Pampanga, Juan Severino Mollery studied theology at the University of Santo Tomas and was consecrated a priest in 1809. As an assistant priest, he moved around the province from town to town before deciding to apply for the position of parish pastor. Despite being turned down four times, he persisted in his efforts. All of his efforts eventually paid off when Magalang embraced him as the first Filipino to lead the parish. Without the apprehension brought on by the Spanish friars, his flock admired him as one of their own. The second Filipino to master the art of calligraphy, Mollery was hailed as a gifted individual who used it to embellish the parish's annual reports. The murder cases remained unsolved due to a lack of information until in 1826, Mollery developed an unidentified illness. He needed helpers to take care of him, and by chance they discovered the bloody possessions of his alleged victims inside his home. Many people were shocked by the discovery because a gifted artist and a devout Christian would be the last person anyone would suspect of committing such heinous crimes. As rumors of his mental instability spread, he was transported to Manila for imprisonment rather than treatment for his deteriorating mental state. According to reports, Mollery claimed that his quest to heal his ailing mother whom he believed had been bewitched. He believed that murdering his parishioners brought his mother's recovery one step closer. The practice of killing people to save a person's soul is not one Mollery would have been familiar with, and there are no records of the condition his mother was experiencing. It makes sense to assume that many of Mollery's attitudes and behaviors were influenced by delusional thinking as a result of a mental breakdown. His trial sparked a great deal of hysteria among Filipinos, and the Spaniards took advantage of this to further support their prejudicial notion that the native indigenous population had a predisposition to believe in fantastical supernatural tales. After 14 years of solitary confinement, Juan Severino Mollery was hanged for his crimes as the first and possibly the only serial killer in Philippine history to be prosecuted. It is surprising that there isn't a single image of Mollery in any historical records for a church servant who was found guilty of murdering that many people. Could this be an effort on the part of the Catholic Church to cover up a scandal from the 1800s? Strangely, since Spaniards have kept records of everything since they first arrived in the archipelago, neither the names of his alleged victims nor the circumstances of their deaths are known. We can reasonably assume that since the victims were likely natives, the colonial power did not deem it necessary to write them down due to the systemic racism experienced by the native Filipinos at the hands of the colonizers. Given that forensics did not exist at the time and crime-solving analysis did not meet 21st century standards of identifying the guilty, it is also at least doubtful how they linked the evidence discovered in Mollery's home to all 57 murder victims. It was common practice to torture people who had been arrested on suspicion of a crime in the Philippines during the colonial era, and it is still the case in some areas of the country today, so it is not completely impossible for a person with Mollery's mental state to confess to a crime while under duress. It is undeniable that superstition played a part in Mollery's case, but it is intriguing to consider that despite how heinous and evil his deeds were, they may have all come down to a love for his mother. Mollery was the first and last known serial killer to operate in Philippine history. What do you think could have caused Father Mollery to go on his killing spree? Was it because he was a sadistic killer hiding behind his position of authority in the church, a religious fanatic with a misguided worldview, or was he mentally unstable and would be given a severe personality disorder diagnosis today? Let me know in the comments section and if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.